A great photo can immortalize a moment in a performance. A bad photo, on the other hand, is just unpleasant for everyone involved. If you're struggling to get high quality images off the mosh pit floor, or if you're just starting your journey into the world of concert photography, we've got some tips that'll help you out. Before you even start shooting, you need to make sure you have the right lens. As a rule of thumb, try not to use anything with an aperture above 2.8 when shooting concerts. A higher aperture forces you to adjust shutter speed and ISO to compensate and may result in increased motion blur or pixelation in your image. You also need to make sure that your lens selection reacts well to the situation you're in. Personally, I use a 28mm and a 16 to 35mm in order to cover all my bases and make sure I can get the shot. One thing that's going to help with all of your images is to make sure you're saving raw files. Open up your settings menu and make sure that the quality is set to raw. These files contain a lot more information than a standard JPEG and will give you more options when editing. You can also make adjustments to the overall quality of light that would be impossible otherwise. One of the biggest obstacles at live shows is colored stage lights. At high ISO, the saturated colors might look like they washed out your entire photo. A simple fix is to make the image black and white. Under image adjustments in Photoshop, select black and white and this will let you manually select how each color in the image is converted. This will let you take a washed out photo and make it look much more natural. If you're shooting in a really dark venue or you're just looking to get one perfect shot, you might want to use a flash. Flashes can be intrusive and even distracting for musicians, so some venues don't allow them at all. If they are allowed, you want to make sure that you're as efficient as possible. If you aim the flash upwards, you can bounce the light off the ceiling and capture only some of it without blinding anybody. Ugh. Lastly, you just want to set your shutter speed to 1 200th of a second to capture the flash. Hopefully these tips are enough to help you get started, but remember, practice makes perfect. Nobody gets it right the first time, so remember to treat every shot as a learning experience. For the Calgary Journal, I'm Jody Brack. And I'm Paul Rogers.